I'm Peggy. And today we're going to talk about one of my very favorite things, tools of the trade. So come on in and let's get started. I want to show you what I use to create my artwork. Everything starts on a great piece of paper. The paper that I like to use is this one. This is Nina 80 pound classic crest cover weight paper in a solar white color. And it is just a wonderful foundation for both stamping and coloring and it has just the right amount of tooth to it. All of my cards are made on memory box, memory box cardstock. And the reason I like memory box is because it has not only a nice range of colors, but all of the insides are white, which is great when you're actually writing a note to somebody. Okay. So what you see here are the basic tools of the trade that I use for coloring all my images. And I'd like to talk to you about each of these things one by one. My favorite colored pencils are Prismacolor Premier brand pencils. The wonderful thing about Prismacolors is they are very, very buttery and blendable, and they have great colors with lots of pigment in them. Okay, the bad thing is that they have loose leads in them. The leads are only held in by the tension of the wood. You can see how this slides around. And the downside of this is if you drop these, the leads will break. And there's nothing more frustrating than sharpening a pencil over and over and having the leads break and break. So in order to keep them from breaking and rolling off the ed edge of the table, I generally put my pencils on a dishcloth or a washcloth to keep them in place and that eliminates that from happening. So if you take good care of the pencils, they will give you great results. Now, Inevitably, you'll find yourself in need of an eraser. This is a kneaded rubber eraser. Uh, this is a Prismacolor brand. There's other brands as well. They come in a little brick like this when they are new. And you take them out and roll them into a little ball like this. And they are great for erasing light lines and are wonderful for making a highlight. I like to, to pinch them into a little point like this and you can kind of scrub on the color and take up some of the color to make it a little bit lighter. Kneaded rubber eraser. The next item that's important is a manual pencil sharpener. This one is by Mars Statler. There are other brands of those as well. Prismacolor makes one too. And you want to use the smaller hole when you sharpen these, uh, when you go to sharpen your pencils. And I like to use a twisting motion where I twist both the sharpener and the pencil at the same time to make a nice point. Don't be afraid of having a sharp pencil when you get into small areas. You're going to need it to get the detail work. So I sharpen a lot. Now when you're using a when you're in a bigger area, you might want a blunter pencil, but anyway, this is a great little sharpener, very portable. You just lift the top off, empty it out. Um, if it happens that you break a lead off into the hole here, you will need to open it up, turn it over, and knock the lead out in order to proceed because you need the whole space here to do the job. Um, another way to sharpen your edges is with a sanding block. And it has basically strips of sandpaper on it, very fine grain, and all you do is rotate the tip of the lead on the sandpaper to get a nice quick point. It's fast, you use up less lead than you do on a sharpener, and that's a good thing. And you can get the little uh, powdery stuff off on this little piece of foam here. And when this fills up with pigment, you just peel off the strip, just like a pad of paper, and start fresh. This is one of my favorite tools. This is a pencil extender. It's just a handle, really, with a socket on the end of it. But the neat thing is, you can use a pencil that's this short. That means you're getting a lot of life out of your pencil. You just slide it into the socket, you push this little ring up so it's nice and tight, and voila, you have a handle. 
It's really important to have your pencil rest between the crook of your forefinger and thumb so you have some control over it and this gives it to you even when those pencils get really small. So it's great to invest in a couple of these. You can rotate in them around as your pencils get short. So um, that's a real winner. This is one of my very, very favorite tools. This is a soft grip stylus and they come in lots of different sizes. As you can see, this one has a very large ballpoint end and this one has a very small end. I generally use the smaller sizes because I'm working on a rubber stamp, which isn't very large, so the scale is better. But I'd love to show you what it does. So here's an example of my paper doll stamp. And I'm going to use just some everyday kitchen wax paper first to rub on the surface so the stylus will glide a little more smoothly. And now I'm going to use this point to draw a little pattern onto the skirt. Now you're not seeing it because I'm working white on white, but you will. So I'm pressing nice and firm with the stylus right into the surface of the paper. And what it's going to do is reveal this very delicate white line pattern that I'm creating. I'm kind of making my own fabric on the skirt. So you'll see I'm going to pick a nice dark color so it's very visible. I'm going to color over this with this lovely deep magenta color. And the, the firmer you color it, the more distinctive the lines will be. I'm going to fill it in all the way to the edge here so you can see that pattern starting to form. And that's the type of effect you can get with this really great little tool. Now, in addition to that, I'm going to show you how a colorless blender works on top of that. Because you can see this red here is still a little bit grainy. If you color over this with the blender, what happens is it fills up the paper tooth and eliminates all the little fuzzy areas so you get a really smooth dose of color on top of those white lines. So two wonderful tools, blender pencil and a soft grip stylus. The other thing that you can do with these um, when you have a, a large stamped image and would like to embellish it is use a black pen to actually do some doodling. This is a Pilot GTEC C4 and the reason I like it is the line quality is very similar to the line quality of the stamped images. So if you draw on it, it actually looks like it's part of the stamp. So I'm going to add a little scallop pattern onto the peplum of this skirt and you can see that if you didn't know any better you'd think this was actually part of the stamped image. So a wonderful drawing tool with rubber stamps. Now, one more wonderful tool I like to use, and this really is a tool, is this little pocket template. This is something that architects used to carry around in their pocket to make little uh, circles and squares. And it actually works great for um, embellishing stamps. And there's a couple of different ways you can use it. You can again use the wax paper to rub on the stamp and your stylus tool. And this time I'm going to draw polka dots onto this cake layer. So I'm using the, um, let's see, the fourth largest circle, and I'm going to actually draw circles on here with the stylus, and I'm creating a polka dot pattern that's going to be defined by these nice little thin white lines. And then again, I'm going to color over it with the pencil, and you can start to see your perfect little circles emerge. So if you're a little timid about that your circles are going to be lopsided or too big or too small, this is a way to correct that and make them look a little more perfect. Plus it's just sort of fun. Now, another way to use the template is just taking a plain old number two pencil 
and lightly drawing circles onto your surface. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you an outline that you can then color in with your colored pencils to make your polka dot pattern. And this is going to look more like a real traditional polka dot pattern. But what's great about using this little soft number two pencil is when you color it in, this line sort of disappears. So you don't even know it's there, but you've got this wonderful outline here to follow to color in your circles. So just, they don't have to be perfect, but what it does is it helps to keep them nice and round and nice and even. And because it's sort of see-through, it's easy to space them as well. So I, and this, this time I'm using the template just with a traditional number two pencil. And templates come in all kinds of shapes. You might even have some floating around in a drawer at home because it's really an old timey tool, but a good one. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour of the tools of the trade. I think we covered some of the basics and also some wonderful tools for embellishing stamps and for extending the life of your pencil. Um, these are just things that I find to be incredibly helpful and wanted to share them with you. This is always my favorite part, revealing those lines. So thanks for joining me today.